North Korea is the most isolated country in the world. In spite of this, it's surprisingly easy for most foreigners to visit the country as a tourist. In this video, we will show you what you can typically expect to see in a 5 days visited country, including many of the sites in Pyongyang, a visit to the demilitarized zone on the border with South Korea, and a train journey from Pyongyang to the Chinese border city of Dandong. At the end of the video, we will also show you some of the exciting food we had on our trip, as well as give you a review of the Yangakta Hotel. Most tours to North Korea start off in Beijing, where you can choose between a couple of airlines to take you to Pyongyang, including the North Korean airline Air Koryo. The flight from Beijing takes about two hours. After arriving in Pyongyang, you will be taken to one of the international hotels in the city. For us, the massive Yangakta Hotel. And after having checked into your hotel, modern air-conditioned Chinese coaches will be ready to take you on your guided tours. Most tours have two North Korean guides. The guides are knowledgeable and friendly, although we are not encouraged to ask them any controversial questions. The whole tour is also filmed, which I'm sure is only used to make the DVD you can buy at the end of the trip. Pyongyang has many monuments and memorials, and one of the most impressive one is the Grand Monument on Mansu Hill, depicting the anti-Japanese revolution. In the center there are two huge bronze statues of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. And like with many monuments in the city, there are certain courtesy codes to be followed when visiting the monument. There's also an option of laying down flowers in front of the statues. Watching the locals pay their respects is just as interesting as the monument itself. Another important landmark in Pyongyang is the Yusha Tower. This 170 meter high tower is a monument representing the official political line of the government, because as they say themselves, uh, to be honest, our country people don't believe the communist idea anymore because it's out of date. So. At the entrance there are several plates with names of delegations that have visited the monument. Inside the tower there's an elevator that will take you to the top with amazing views of the city and its surroundings. The Revolutionary Martyr Cemetery on Mount Taesong just outside of Pyongyang is a cemetery and memorial to the North Korean soldiers fighting against Japanese rule. It's also known as the burial ground of one of Kim Il-sung's wives and the mother of Kim Jong-il. All the graves here have their own bronze busts. Uh, the President Kim Il-sung's laundry in her, that's, uh, in, with her body, uh, this kind of thing. And several times she just rescued the President Kim Il-sung's life. And then all the time she just had a shot of enemies. When you visit North Korea, you are of course not allowed to walk around freely without a guide. So, on the few occasions where we were taken along for a stroll and where we could uh, interact with the locals, quickly became uh, the highlights of the tour. Our group visited Pyongyang on uh, Victory Day, which is a public holiday. So we got a chance to see how the locals spend their uh, free time. Dancing is a big part of celebrating Victory Day. And the foreigners were of course welcome to join. And as more foreigners join the dancing, the crowds grew bigger. A more official celebration of Victory Day is the mass dance in Pyongyang city center. And 
the foreigners are also more than welcome to join here. Walking into the Pyongyang metro is like walking into a museum with its beautiful paintings and its 1960s German trains. When we first enter the metro, we wonder if this might be one of those places which is just for display and not really used by the locals, but it turned out we were just on the wrong station. On the three-hour trip from Pyongyang to the DMC, you will get the feeling of the quality of the North Korean highways, which are really straight but really bumpy. On the way there, there will be a couple of stops where you have the chance to fill up on some local souvenirs. And you also get the feeling of how busy the North Korean highways are. On the entry to the demilitarized zone, it's uh, very tense and a lot of military presence. But after you're inside the zone itself, it's actually quite relaxed. The first place you're taken is where they signed the treaty in 1953 to end the Korean War. Some of the original flags and documents are still there. Is it the South Korean War? No, no. They don't recognize On the walls, you can see pictures and maps from the Korean War as well as some mandatory pictures of the leaders of today. When you get to the border itself, you can't help but notice that there's a lot of people on the northern side, but no one to be seen on the southern side. The actual border itself is just in the middle of these blue houses. And although we didn't get to go all the way up to the border, we got a pretty good overview of the area. And the only people we saw on the southern side were these tourists. In the border city of Kaesong, they have a really good stamp shop. So if you want to pick up some stamps or some propaganda posters, this is the place to do it. They also have a really good selection of ginseng here, and some local art. On the way back from the DMC, we also stopped in Sarawan city, where we after a short climb to the top of a local hill, got a good view of the city and its surroundings. <laughs> and on the way down, we stumbled across some local entertainment. In Sarawan, we also got to taste uh, makoli, which is a uh, locally brewed uh, rice wine. Good? In Mangyong Day, we visited Kim Il Sung's birthplace, which is where he spent his childhood. It is the carrier to carry something on one's back, and you can see the round tool. Can you guess what it is? For the whole day, the Japanese, a person in a Back in Pyongyang, the Kim Il-sung Square is where the leaders have their big parades. All around the square there are marks on the ground to help during the parades. And just a couple of days later, we stumbled across a parade on the same square. And neither we or our guides had any idea what they were celebrating, but it was still quite an impressive sight. On the 
trip to North Korea, you have to be prepared for some changes in the program, as places can be shut down on short notice. And so too on our tour. As a replacement for one of our cancellations, we got to see this uh, amazing acrobatic circus. It wasn't really allowed to film in here, but I still got a couple of shots of the action. Another replacement activity was a trip to the bowling course. Not that different from back home, but a nice break from the guided tours. And especially with some local refreshments. On a short trip to North Korea, the program will be packed from early in the morning to 8 or 9 in the evening every day. This also means that you will be driving around the city a lot, and some of the general impression of Pyongyang will be had from the bus window. And these are some of those impressions. So, uh, uh, and then after, so we started to see the, we have been to see the map. So as our tour is coming to an end, it's time to say goodbye to our driver and our two friendly North Korean guides. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 There's an option of going by train from Pyongyang back to China. If you do so, you can relax in the VIP lounge before you're taken on board the train a little bit before all the other tourists. The hardbed open cabins might not look like much, but they're more than comfortable enough and very social. On one of our sides, we had a young North Korean badminton team, and on the other side, a Chinese tourist group. <laughs> and the five or six hours it takes from Pyongyang up to the Chinese border will give you plenty of time to relax and study the North Korean countryside. As you approach the border, you can see the silhouettes of the skyscrapers in the Chinese city of Dandong. And the last thing you see before entering China is the older bridge that was bombed by the Americans during the war and never rebuilt. Now a tourist attraction on the Chinese side. If you don't count the food at our hotel, the food on our trip was surprisingly good. And the entertainment was never far away, whether it was local, or the occasional stunt from our guides. One of my personal favorites was the Chungiru Hot Pot Restaurant, where we cooked a meal on the table. Another favorite was the Pyongyang Duck Barbecue Restaurant.
at the Tungil restaurant in Kaesong City, we tried the traditional Korean pansangi, which is a series of dishes served in bronze bowls. And here, you also had the option of dog soup. Other restaurants had more normal Asian food, which was also very tasty. And believe it or not, Pyongyang has a stylish beer bar, where we got to taste some of the local flavors. The Yanggakdo International Hotel is located on the Yanggak Island in the river Taedong. It's the largest working hotel and the second largest building in North Korea. The hotel is very spacious and among the things they offer is a uh, souvenir shop, a bookstore, a small convenience no store oh. and in the basement there are several activities like billiards, casino and bowling. Breakfast is had in one of the many restaurants in the hotel. For a westerner I wouldn't say the food here is very good, but if you can get by with some toast and eggs you'll be just fine. And of course there's the instant coffee. The rooms at Yanggakdo are spacious but a bit worn down. You have a few international channels and otherwise what you expect to find in an international hotel. As most foreign visitors are placed on the top floors of the hotel, you're basically guaranteed a great view from your room. Well, that's all I have from North Korea and I'll leave you with a few moments from the Victory Day fireworks over the Taedong River. <laughs>